What's up guys, happy Friday, Iggy here with Foutech Unlimited and today we're going to do another build for the FN 545. This one, uh, instead of the TLR7, it's going to be a TLR1 and it's going to be a full uh, black camo setup and uh, I'm actually looking forward to it. So it's QLS system, uh, Safari Land mid drop and uh, it's going to have uh, quite a few goodies on it. So uh, I already put the TLR1 on it, TLR1 on it, TLR1 on it, that was interesting. And uh, we're going to go ahead and build this up so um, and get it out. But I got a quite a bit done today, and I'm pretty excited over that. I have uh, the rest of the material came in for the four projects I'm working on, so I'm hoping to have those out by Monday, uh, which means that um, hopefully I will be midway through February by this coming week. So um, I'm trucking, and I got to tell you, it's... Uh, it's not exactly slow season. I still get a, a ridiculous amount of orders a month, but I am putting out more than what I'm receiving, and uh, that is awesome, and I'm happy about that. So that means eventually I will get caught up. So, um, But the month of January, all those orders were like builds that they didn't they took a long time. They weren't quick builds, you know? So, um, I was doing like three hour holsters, four hour holsters and, uh, getting them out, but it was just all of them at the same time. It's just kind of really big roadblock. So anyways, let's, um, get this going and let's get it out the door so I can move on to the next one. And as you can see, I have already drilled this. You saw that in the last video. So I'm going to go ahead and take our bolt. And get that hooked up. If you don't know what this is, watch my other videos. No, just kidding. These are, um, I cut the threaded barrel portion off just in case somebody has some other random item on their firearm. So, so with this on, um, we're going to be cut right here and then kind of poke out a little bit. Because uh, I have this open. We could put to a longer one, but I don't think my screw or my bolt can do a longer one. I mean, in all technicality, I could put a dowel inside here to... We could. That's a lot more stuff to do. This will look just fine. Oh, if I had a 3D scanner, this would have been done already. Actually, I should say if I had a vac mold. All right. So let's get this all taped up. Let's get everything we need on it. So uh, let's see here. It is going to have QLS on it, which means we need uh, this blocking. And we need uh, that blocking. And this blocking. And we will be good to go. And on another note, with the light blocking that we're going to be uh, using today, again, they are made in-house. Now, I got to tell you, I made like 60, 70, 80 sets. I did, it was under 100, but it was almost that much, and uh, I have sold out, which is unreal. So um, I do have more material in-house, so I'm going to be spending probably, you know, half a day uh, making another like 20, 30 sets. And then um, I throw them in a bin, and when someone orders them, I just grab them and go. That way uh, you guys aren't waiting on those. So, um, but yeah, they're going to be, uh, then there's a lot more coming. So I appreciate all you guys for that, investing in these. These are a fantastic tool to have. And uh, let's use them. Let's go to town. And we have our site channel on. I'm going to go ahead to our five layers here and we're going to run out on this tape woot woot. and after getting these two orders i have decided that i have put on my list of pale horse molds to buy this setup because it already would have been done and the tlr7 setup but I just got a 3D scanner, so I could go ahead and make my own molds, and I ended up returning it because the thing was a major POS. So I'm going to save up. The Einstein I'm looking at, or Einscan I'm looking at, is uh, 2,200 smackaroonies. So I'm going to save up, buy one of them, 
and hopefully uh, kick some butt on it. All right, let's get this prepped and I need all these guys. If you guys follow my channel, you know that my retention on TLR1 lights is right here instead of right here. I like to put it here and have zero issues with it. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take our in-house blocking. And just so you guys just kind of reiterate it, I make most of the blocking and uh, I do buy some blocking like stuff right here that is all from uh, Holstersmith and KnifeKits.com and he, I will be coming out with a master blocking kit. It is in the works. It is, just takes a long time to sit at the computer and, and program every single one that I have because I use quite a bit. So that will be eventually. So I'm going to do a, uh, like I said, a master blocking kit. Every single thing that you see on this channel will be for sale. All right, there's one. And we'll move on to this side. Shoo -da -da -da. <laughs> Perfect, though. I am absolutely losing my. Oh yeah, I was. <laughs> I lost this, but then I realized that I used it all already. You know what it is? It's Friday. I've done about, I want to say 120 plus or minus a couple hours this week in the garage. So, and I'll tell you what, when you're doing something like this and you're getting as popular as you are, yeah, you kind of, you spend a lot of time doing this. If I still had my full-time job, forget about it. I wouldn't be able to do anything. I'd have to stop one of these things there's one and here's two So really, the only thing I need to do now is go ahead and do the blocking for the QLS fork and the blocking for the level 2 hood. Uh, this is a custom image right hand. I already have the custom image printed off the sublimation printer. Uh, I haven't put it on the Kydex yet because I do that right during uh, or like during this print. So uh, let's see here. All right, so we're going to need to get our hood out. There we go. And we will need our fork as well. Okay. This is going to be placed right about here. Which means right there. Now I need to put blocking underneath both. Thicker, thicker like a snicker. All right, let's see here. There we go. down a little bit Not perfect as it is because the top half of the slide comes off for the RMR cut so the RMR isn't massively tall I 
until it's rocking. I'm going to shove a very thin piece of material in between. I wonder if I can. We want it as it was. Yep. Perfect. And I poke the holes in this. When I made this piece of blocking, I made it without the holes, and then I found out, found out real quick that it is so much easier when you have the holes. All right. So with this being here, like so. Let me see here. Oh yeah, that's good. Like I say, because this shuts off. Plenty. So that'll be right there, and then we're gonna have this sitting right here. And that needs to be blocked up and sitting right here. All right, I need to make some blocking. Let's see how that fits. Fits pretty good, actually. Go this way. Oh, yeah, perfect. All right. blocking underneath as well. This is why this would be 20 times easier with a vac mold. Let's see here. Okay. Build it up. I wonder if I put this here. Actually, that wasn't half bad. Still want blocking underneath it though.
that is going to sit right there. And I believe I used that last time. And I did. retention and then we are all set to bend joy okay, I'm gonna poke the holes though in this there we go don't need these because I do that with uh, my laser all right, got to make our retention plate, and then we're going to go ahead and set up the material for sublimation. All right, so we have our print, which I had to put an extra piece on because it was just as wide, but we know that when we press things, Kydex shrinks, so uh, I went ahead and just added a little bit, which is going to be off the firearm anyway, because uh, we're going to have the muzzle end on this end, and this is the color it's going on. So it's going to print the black the dark gray and it's going on uh, this um, infantry green so should be good make sure it's extremely clean and then we're going to take our image All right you can tape it I don't need to but that's clean and that's clean and there we go And I personally have it at 395 degrees for 400 seconds. And now I just have to wait. What you do need to do though, is you have to decide which foam that you have to sacrifice. As you can see, this color's on here from a submarine print I did uh, about a month ago. So we're gonna be using uh, this side. It's heavily used, but it's uh, perfect for what we're doing. And uh, it's crappy foam. Um, it's nice and hot. It's been underneath this right here. And uh, this is the stuff I'm willing to let go. I have brand new foam in house, so I don't have to worry about it. But when you do uh, sublimation, it will transfer to foam, which is why sublimation is much better when you do in vacuum. You don't have to worry about it, but you will destroy your foam and it will transfer to a lighter color. So if you're doing white, beige, tan, anything like that, if you have dark colors on your foam, it will transfer and it won't come out. So make sure you have a sacrificial foam and uh, that way you will be all set. And uh, I have, I have done stuff before as in like saran wrap, excuse me, I have done, I have done stuff before where I've done saran wrap in between the kydex and the foam. Uh, I've done parchment paper. It works. Nothing gets on the foam. However, you can see the little, little lines looks like veins, um, sort of like, sort of like what these lines might leave. Um, but we do it well enough where we're not going to see those so um yeah so i got about 300 seconds left and then it's going to go in the press and you'll see it when it comes out now while it's waiting i just went over the order again just so i could verify what i'm building and yes qls right hand but instead of the spets gear it's a wrs hood so i went ahead and i swapped it out for the wrs um luckily it's the same platform so i don't have to change any of the blocking and we didn't need to add the uh threaded barrel the socket on there with the bolt because it's going to be a compensated holster which means that i do an open bottom so it's going to be cut flush at the muzzle and then it's going to wrap around the flashlight so you can't push the firearm all the way through and uh i got 194 seconds before it's ready
And if you're curious to see how the print's going to come out before it comes out of the press, this is what it's going to look like. This is the matching mag carrier with the Blade Tech Tech Lock for the 545. Uh, it's a double stacked 45 and 10 millimeter. And this is what's going on. This is the Leo style with MRDs on the side. Went ahead and built that while that's in the press. And uh, almost done. Almost done. Well, bad news, ladies and gents. We'll start off with the good news, though. Good news is it is out of the press and it looks awesome. Uh, much, much thicker on this side because of the blocking. So the halfway point kind of shifted a little bit, but it's going to happen. Um, but shattered the rail on the mold. So we have it in the press right now. We got some epoxy on it right there. That way we can get this back together and use it to finish the holster. It happens. It is what it is. The way they design these new guns is they just have a little bit of blip. Uh, you know, just a tiny bit of rail and then it opens up and then it's a little bit of rail again. Actually, let me show you again. So you got rail, nothing in the middle, and then rail. And by doing that, it's not strong. So it kind of messes with us as holster makers. But uh, like I said, vac mold coming in for this. I could still use this, but if it breaks again, it's just going to keep being junk. I will JB weld it eventually, but this is just quick epoxy because I can't find my JB weld. And that'll get this going so we can use it again. So I might take a quick little break, let that harden, and uh, go from there. And we have it started. We drawn out. Went ahead and marked it. So uh, we're going to do it at the very end of the muzzle right here. I wasn't going to do it further up, but um, I'm not going to. So we're going to go at the very edge of the muzzle, and then you see how it dips in. We're going to open that up just a little bit, and I'll show you how I do that later. But we're going to open this. Uh, I just got to get where to cut from here. So that we know it's going to be roughly around here. And down like so. And this seems like it's on pretty good, so I'm not worried about that anymore. And we will line this up, and this is going to have to go right there. And we're going to go just right outside that line. And go down. to do three retention points on long long ones and let's see here just like that and that's what we're gonna look like so I'm gonna go ahead cut it and drill it and get this baby all fixed up and that print looks good all right, so we're out of the press, we're cut, you saw it, it looks good. Now, we have an issue, but we knew it was gonna happen because of the nature of it. Now, when we have a mold, like so, which is fixed, by the way, and we have blocking on it that sticks out way too far, like, you know, we have to right here. What's gonna happen is when you foam press it, it's gonna find the center of it, so that center, isn't going to be the center of this. It is inevitable. It's science. It's nature. It's there's nothing to combat it unless it's vacuum because it's a split. So there's really nothing you can do. Now we made this right. So this looks good. Looks good. Okay. But before I continue and before I waste time on this, I'm going to try and fix it. So as you can see, the sight channel, how it's almost flat right here, and how it's curved right here. Will it still work? Yes. Will it still clear it? Yes. Does it look good? No. So what I'm going to try and do, attempt to do, is I'm going to fix this so it's actually in the center. And to do that, I'm going to heat this up, and uh, we're going to lay it flat, cool it, possibly cool it, and then heat it up again, and then bend it where it needs to be over this. 
so we're only going to rework this section and this is where the sight channel jig is going to come into play which i will most likely start making those as well so we have them um, but i'm going to work on that to get rid of this it's going to be just like that on the flashlight nothing we can do about it but we're going to go ahead and move this sight channel because i don't want it there so everything else it's good over here but everything else doesn't doesn't look right so let's fix it now first things first i went ahead and i put the side channel back on as you can see bam and i have the uh heater heating up and we're going to go ahead and like i said we're just going to hit this right here and i'm going to straighten it out and flatten it up hopefully it goes well otherwise i'm doing it again So if you look at it, we have it almost centered. Now we have to fix this part right here, which uh, we're going to do right now. So I'm going to go ahead and heat that part up. But instead of doing it on this, I'm going to do it with uh, the heat gun. So cool.
And then, see how it's kind of a little floppy right there? I'm gonna heat this back up and then press it back down. All right, so how do you guys think that went? We went from not in the center to that right there. And that looks pretty good. Uniform, uniform. So uh, the way it came out, I am happy with. And now the only thing left to do is go ahead and clean up like normal. So that went ahead and that solved that problem. So you don't always have to start over. Sometimes it's good, but I'll tell you, back in the day when I first started, I wouldn't have the confidence to do this. So because of that, we know we can do this. So just so you know. Ladies and gentlemen, I decided to reprep the mold, print another piece out and throw it in the press. It is currently in the press now. Reason why I did it is because, you know, the longer I looked at this and the time that I spent on it, I, in fact, don't like this. So, um, put a new one in. This time, I did three layers of tape on the side with the QLS because it's thicker. So, three layers and this. It should sandwich this in the middle. We shall see. If this one comes out better, I'll use it. If not, I might press a third time. So, we'll see. It's uh, 9.30 and I got to be up at like 4 a.m. So, yeah. All right, guys. The second one came out of the press. And it is balls on. So this one, we don't need. Let's build this one. Mm -mm. All right, so now I'm gonna have to re repeat that process all again. And so we got this out, we got it opened up, everything's empty. And as you see, you saw a white line here earlier. That white line is just residue from the paper. You hit it with REM oil and it virtually goes, it goes away. So that right there is the transition from the paper and you can't even, can't really tell. Um, but we're gonna be cutting that off anyway, so it don't matter. And this is on the back side, So that makes me happy. So I'm gonna go ahead, get it to the point we were before and then put it all together and then ship it. And I got a lot of other stuff to do. All right, guys, we are finally at that point. Now, let me show you why I went ahead and redid this. Obviously, it looks good. Look at that. Everything's right in the center now. Everything's where it should be. So that little hack I did with three foam on one side, the taller side, and two foam on this side really stood out instead of having that. Also, another thing I did is I did a smaller retention plate instead of a long one, and that seemed to help out as well. So uh, I went ahead... I laser cut the holes, I added the gusset, and now all we have to do is add the retention hardware and add this hardware for the hood, and then we're going to get ourselves situated. We also have to do a mid-drop with QLS, uh, which isn't that bad, and uh, I just have to find... I do, I'm so... I cannot wait to clean this bench. It's getting really getting to me. All right, no, it's right in front of me. All right. So many jobs coming in. Actually, no, I need those. And so many jobs going out. All right. All right. Go ahead. Add these three. These are the supplied ones. And we'll get this right here. Whoop. Uh, yep, this is definitely my last holster of the night. <laughs> when you start messing up. That's when you know it's time to call it quits. All right, so these ones are actually built properly and you can tighten them down. No matter how tight you put them, look at that. It still moves. Unlike the other crap. Well, unlike the other hoods. Um, these move once you torque them down. All right, we're going to need these right here. And that is for uh, this guy. Uh, but we're going to do our retention. Now the mold did attempt to break again during that press uh, everything is still attached but it is kind of soft mainly because the glue wasn't completely dry it was still somewhat tacky and I just wanted to get it in there it all held though
All right, and with this like this, we're gonna go ahead and insert. Get where we want this to be, which is right there. And we'll go ahead and drill that. Clean the hole. Now clean the inside of the hole. Add a little bit of blue goo. Gonna have to shave this down a little bit or get a smaller one. There it is right there. Alright. And a couple more steps to do. So that is complete. And what we need to do is connect the QLS receiver plate with the mid drop, which we don't need those. And we are going to need the short ones here. All right, now we need the nuts. Right now, to do this, the nuts go on uh, this side right here. We'll take the short guys. Oh, too tight. We'll go ahead and add those. that which means this just like so and there it is a FN545 with the um, night camo the black black multicam it's far than QLS WRS level 2 hood compensated open bottom TLR1 with matching mag holder